Hello, this is MakerJ101, and here's the um, second part of this um, video. There's probably going to be a third part of the um, sacrificial anode video, so they're both pretty rusty. Um, it's not as good as it was originally, so we'll pull out, pull out this one first, the one that has no sacrificial anode. So, make sure some other gunk is off of it. So it looks pretty rusted. Um, I guess I could wipe it off a little bit here. Yeah, but that's rust. So it's not eaten away a lot, but it's mostly just surface rust, I guess. Um, so yeah. And then here's the one that has the sacrificial anode on it. So it kind of looks like it was partially protected. Um, so in this area here, but not over there. Unless I didn't scrape all the tin off here, maybe. Because, or the plastic. But it's not corroded much at all on this side. So it's kind of odd. I'm not really sure exactly what's happening here. Um, that's why I'm going to do another experiment here. But there's the um, zinc. The camera's out of focus again. Um, which is pitted, but not a lot. So... I'm not exactly sure. I'm just I'm gonna try this experiment here. I'm gonna do a bunch of got, I've got controls. I'm gonna try salt and um, yeah, we'll get on with that. So, All right. So here's a close up of the zinc. As you can see, I scratched it there a little bit, and it's got a nice um, zinc oxide or something on there. Um, but I think part of the problem is that the zinc does not produce enough voltage um, because this is just plain water. It's not very conductive, so. Once, so it doesn't have enough voltage to actually protect the steel very well. So I'm going to, that's why I'm going to try salt in the next experiment. Hopefully it'll lower the resistance of the water enough um, that it'll make the zinc more effective. Because <clears throat> actually on boats, um, they only use zinc in um, salt water. If they used, and in fresh water they use, usually use magnesium because the magnesium is... Um, lower down on the redox table so it's going to corrode away with a higher voltage and protect the steel better so yeah and if they used um, magnesium in salt water it would actually produce too much voltage and actually um, weaken the steel a little bit so yeah that's just kind of something interesting that I read but as you can see there's a lot more rust in the bottom here just the settled rust than in the um, one with this one was the one with the anode zinc anode but um so yeah okay so this is my test setup for the um sacrificial anode experiment um so i'm using steel wool um just normal steel wool as the um iron um and then these zinc pennies um i sanded them off so basically like this one this one's the first one i did but um these other ones. So basically this container is just a plastic box that is um, 4 by 8 inches and so I'm using alligator clips to hold everything together. So here's my zinc here on this one. This is just water um, in all of these except the ones that are marked salt which are these three right here. Um, so this is my... some people were wondering if you have to have them electrically connected and yes you do but I'm going to test it anyway just to see what happens. Um, so I've got them separated in there. There's no electrical contact between them other than the water. Um, so we're going to see what happens. And um, this one has an electrical contact and this is just zinc and um, the steel wool. This one is going to be salt and the steel wool and that's electrically connected with a wire. Um, this is aluminum. This, the aluminum is actually farther down on the redox chart. So it actually should be a better, it's between zinc and, um, magnesium so it actually should be better than zinc at protecting the steel but it may it seems as though they don't use aluminum as commonly because the way it corrodes it doesn't corrode evenly or something like that um, and then so this is going to be salt and aluminum um, this is um, aluminum and normal water this is going to be our control with salt so we just have the steel wool in that one and then over here we have the control with um, steel wool with no salt. And then here I'm just going to try and see if I can still protect or if I can use this as a battery. So I've got the pennies over here and the steel wool on the other side so it's connected up like a battery. 
and I'm going to see if I can actually draw power off of it and if it'll still protect the steel wool effectively. So I'll probably connect a jewel thief up or something like that to it or an LED to see what happens to that. Um, so right now I'm mixing up the salt water. Um, in each one of these I'm putting 20 milliliters of um, water. Um, I'm not sure if I'll, I'll probably need to replenish them. I'll just replenish them as I need to. But I'm just going to put one little spoon of salt in there. This is like a little chemistry set spoon. And I'm going to see if it's salty enough. I'll just taste it and see. But this is actually anodized salt. I don't know if that really matters. It's just table salt. I just want to um, increase the conductivity of the water a little bit because that should actually... It wouldn't... It doesn't make sense. Or it, you wouldn't think that this that would actually protect the steel wool more. But I think it should actually because it'll make the water more conductive so more electricity can protect it or something like that. Um, I'm not really sure if that's going to happen or not, but that's why I'm doing this test. So yeah, it's a little bit salty, so that's probably good enough. So I'll put approximately 20, millim 20 milliliters of water in each one of these that are marked salt. So that's pretty close. And we'll put some in this one. Oh, that's a little bit too much. I might need to move some out of that one. Yeah, because this one doesn't have enough. Okay, so it's all set up. Um, so now I just have to wait and see what the results are. So the battery over here is all set up. Um, and as you can see, actually some of them are starting to turn a little bit um, cloudy um, or yellowish color. Um, these three here are not at all turning any color. Um, probably because they're working. Um, but like these ones are all slightly turning a little bit um, rusty colored or more like just yellowy colored. Yeah, you can see real good from this side there. But um, the battery is actually powering this little jewel thief right here. Um, and this is the voltage. The jewel thief is drawing about one milliamp. Um, so not very powerful battery, but you could get a little bit from it. And it has a maximum voltage of about two volts. So right now it's disconnected from the um, jewel thief. And the voltage is rising there. It has a short current of about 2 milliamps, um, but that goes down after a few seconds. See the voltage is building up there. And I actually had to add salt to that because it was only putting out about, um, oh, let's see, 0 0.2 milliamps. And that is not enough to run a jewel thief, or, or a conventional jewel thief. Um, but if you make one of the, um, like, let's see, lid motor had a um, sort of jewel thief circuit. Um, that can run off much much less current than that, but um, actually it's a different circuit than a drill thief, but it's, yeah. Um, but, yeah, this is the voltage there. It's about 1 milliamp. I measured it a few minutes ago, but, um, so yeah, I had to add salt to those, and, um, so yeah. Um, other than that, I guess we just let it sit here and um, see what happens, what the results will be. Okay, so here's a redox chart of the metals here. So here's magnesium, um, and then aluminum, there's zinc, and here's the iron. So as you can see, the iron is the highest on the chart and the um, magnesium is the lowest. So the magnesium is going to um, have the greatest voltage difference and it will actually corrode away faster than any of the other ones, um, I think. But um, So pretty with the redox chart, if something is higher on the chart, so here's copper, I could protect copper with pretty much anything down here, so if I had copper and iron um, like in the same container and they were connected together, um, you would the iron would corrode away very fast and it would actually corrode away to protect the, um, the copper because it's actually somehow the electrons, when something corrodes, it loses electrons to the water or something like that. I'm not exactly sure how that works. Um, but when you put the um, zinc in there, it actually loses electrons and gives them back to the steel so or the iron. So, I don't know, it's kind of interesting. You'd have to read it on Wikipedia. I don't exactly understand it, but um, yeah, just look it up on Wikipedia. Um, I'll put the link in the description to the redox chart and to the Wikipedia page about this. Um, but you can also protect it with a, a voltage. So, with my Stirling engine, if I wanted, I could take the um, the generator and actually hook that voltage up to the water jacket to protect it from rusting 
but it would use a lot of most, probably most of the electricity that would um be coming from the engine and it also wouldn't be reliable because when the engine's off you wouldn't be getting any voltage so it would just rust if there's any water still in there so it's not the best and they do protect pipelines and things with um voltage like that but i'm i think that going with a sacrificial anode is a much better solution for my problem with the um, water jacket rusting out so i'm probably going to use well i'm going to decide on what metal to use after this experiment probably um, magnesium is the best because it produces the most voltage and it's lowest on the redox chart but it's going it, I don't have um, access to a lot of magnesium so I can't really use that so I'm gonna go with um, probably zinc or aluminum depending on what the experiment results show um, so yeah um, that's about it um, thanks for watching